here, here, and then it brings in the nav here, the navigation items from the side. And the icon also changes. So basically we have two icons open and close. We're going to position them so that when we click it, this circle rotates and shows the close button. Obviously, we need a little bit of JavaScript to be able to add and remove the specific class, which we're going to call show nav. And that will, you know, rotate and bring the menu in. So I think this looks really cool. Um, so it's it's going to be mostly CSS that we're dealing with. We need to add specific styles for uh, specific elements when the show nav class is present. The only JavaScript we really need is to add or move the class when we click this button. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so we're going to get started here. I have my project starter open. I also have a link here to the font awesome CDN so that we can use some icons for the open and close buttons. So in the title here, I'm just going to say rotating navigation. And down here, let's get rid of this H1. We're going to have a container that wraps everything. And in here, we're going to have a circle dash container that's going to wrap the circle. So we're another class of circle. And this is basically at the, the, you know, the circle that's going to be up in the corner with the buttons. So in here, we're going to have a button with the ID of close. And I just want to use an icon from Font Awesome. So FAS and then FA dash times will be the icon. And right under that, we'll have a button with the ID of open. And this is going to be the icon FAS and then FA dash bars to give us like that, you know, that hamburger look. So if I save that, we're just going to see our two buttons here. Now we want to be still within the main container, but outside of the circle container. So right above the last div, we're going to have our content and you could put absolutely anything here in this content div. We're just going to put an H1 and say amazing article and in small tags, we'll put the author, our good friend, Florin Pop. And then paragraph, let's do Lorem 100 just to throw some dummy text in there. Under the paragraph, we'll have another H3 and we'll say my dog and we're going to have a picture of a dog. I'm just going to paste this. Uh, this image tag in here and of course, Like I said, you could put anything you want here. This is just an, an unsplash image of a dog. And then underneath that, we'll have a paragraph. We'll do Lorem uh, 75 and save and we get a cute little dog on the screen. So underneath the container. So the container ends here, the last div, we're going to put our nav. So let's just create a, a HTML5 nav tag with a UL. And then an li and I'm going to use icons here as well. So we'll do I F A S and F A dash home. And then next to that icon, we'll just say home and let's copy that down twice. So this one is going to be about I mean, you probably these are probably be links, but that's fine. You can add the links if you want. So F A let's do user dash alt and then for Uh, this is going to be contact. These aren't going to be actual pages. The point of this project is the the actual animation and the position of the nav and all that, not the actual inner pages. So this will use envelope. Okay, so that should do it for the HTML. Let's jump into our style sheet and we'll do a good part of this. Now we might probably have to break it into another video because there's quite a bit of CSS. But I'm going to use the Lado font. So CSS question mark family equals Lado. And then we'll add that to our body. Lado. All right. And then let's see. We're actually not going to use all this flex stuff here. So I'm going to get rid of pretty much all of this except for. Uh, let's see, except for the overflow hidden, which I'm actually going to change to overflow X hidden. So what that does is it only hides the scroll bar on the X axis. So going this way. So we, we want to be able to scroll this way and then margin zero. And then let's also add a background color of 333, which is a dark gray. And then let's have color 222. And I know that that doesn't look right, but we're going to set the container background color to a light color. So let's do background 
color and we'll do FA three times. Now with this container, basically it's going to rotate a little bit over when it has a specific class of show nav. So before I add anything else to the container, let's do container when it has show nav and we can rotate it with the transform property and then rotate and I'm going to rotate it negative 20 degrees. All right. And then let's see if we go back here and we just add that class manually to this show nav, then you can see it rotates and I'm just going to keep that there for a second. Um, we're going to want to change the transform origin. So transform origin when you when you rotate the origin by default is going to be like in the middle. It just it, it just turns it, it rotates it. However, we want it to rotate from the top left position. So it rotates. I can't really explain it. If you go to the MDN docs for um, for trend transform origin, you'll be able to see how it works with different values. But we want to set the transform origin property to the top left. OK, so now you can see the rotation point is up here instead of in the middle. Um, now we do want to transition on that because we don't want it to just flick, you know, rotate real quick. We want it to be smooth. So let's add a transition onto that. We want to transition the transform property, say 0.5 seconds, and we'll just use linear. So it's just, you know, all one speed or whatever. And you can see it actually does it when I save because we have that class on it. Um, now I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of that class for now, but we know that it does rotate when it has that specific class added. So some other things I want to do here is just set the width to 100 viewport widths. So basically take up the whole, you know, the whole viewport um, horizontally. And then let's set the min height to I'm going to set that to 100 viewport heights. So we want to take up the whole viewport um, and then for padding, let's say padding 50 pixels all the way around. And that should do it for the container. Now let's work on the circle container, which is around this. So circle dash container. And I want to position this in a fixed position. And we want it to be like a half circle on the edge of the page. So we'll set this to negative 100 pixels for the top and then left. Same thing, negative 100 pixels. And right now we just don't see anything. Basically, the buttons are, are not showing right now. So for the circle itself, because remember, we have a, a circle container, but then we also have a class of circle that wraps around the icon. So this is where we're going to add like the background color, which is going to be hexadecimal FF7979. And let's set a height of 200 pixels and a width of 200 pixels. And now you can see it up in the corner there. Um, we want this to be a circle, so border dash radius. We're going to set that to 50%, make that a half circle. Well, I mean, it's a full circle, but half of it's off the screen. That's what we did negative 100 because we have 200 for the height and the width. If you increase or decrease this, you want to adjust that as well. And we want to position this relative so we can position the buttons inside absolute. And this is going to rotate. So I want to add a transition on the transform property and let's make that same thing 0.5 seconds linear so same as the container rotation all right and then for the buttons let's say circle button and for these I want to I know we can't see them at the moment let's actually position them first so we'll position them absolute oops so we want to position absolute and let's put them top 50% and from the left 50%. Um, and then let's make the height 100 pixels. And then let's set and I know it doesn't look right yet. Let's set the background to transparent. 
and, and they're both right. They're both in the same exact spot right now. We want to take off that border. So border zero. Um, let's set the font size bigger as well. So font size will set that to 26 pixels. And let's set the color to white. Okay, and then I just want to get rid of this border when it's in its focus state. So let's say dot circle and the button we want to target focus and set outline to none. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. So each one has it. One has an ID of open. One has an ID of close. So I want to target the open. So circle button with the ID of open. And I'm going to set that left value to 60 percent. Okay, the open button is what we're going to see initially, and that's where I want it positioned. So for the close, let's say circle and we want the uh, button that has the ID of close. And I'm going to set that to top. And let's set that to 60 percent. And this is relative to the circle. Okay, and um, we want to rotate this, this close button. So let's use transform, rotate, and we're going to rotate at 90 DEG, so 90 degrees. And let's set this transform origin. Oops. Uh, transform origin is going to be top left as well. So now I save it and you can't see it. It's up here. In fact, if I take my container here and let's set just temporarily set this to 200 pixels. You can see exactly where it's positioned. So we'll just put that back to negative 100 and we should just see the, the lines here. And it's going to stay fixed there no matter what. Um, this image, though, let's Let's just fix that real quick. We're going to do the rest of the CSS in uh, in the next video, but I just want to target the content image and set a max width of 100% of its container because that's bugging me. But yeah, you could have absolutely any content you want here and we can see the nav and stuff down here. But in the next video, we'll finish the CSS and then we'll add the, the little bit of JavaScript to be able to click this and you know add the show nav class and it will do do its whole rotation effect. Um, let's actually add though onto uh, onto the button. Let's add a cursor pointer like that. All right, so that's it. I'll see you in the next video. All right, so we need to finish up our CSS. We have to deal with the the actual nav down here. But before we do that, I'm just going to add a couple more content styles. So for Uh, for the content itself, let's do a max width of 1000 pixels and we'll set margin. Let's do 50 pixels on the top and bottom auto on the left and right. Keep it in the middle. So even if we stretch it out, you know, it's going to have a thousand pixel, a uh, thousand pixel width max. And then for the H1, say content H1. We're just going to take the margin away from that. So margin zero. And then for the small tag for the author. Let's set a color of five, five, five. And let's set a font style of italic. And then for the paragraphs. So content paragraph, we're going to set color to three, three, three. And let's set let's increase the line height to 1.5. And we already have the image at 100% width. Good. So now we just need to really deal with the navigation, which is right now is down here. And what I want to do, since we're only going to see this when this actually rotates, when we click this, I'm going to add the show nav. So show dash nav. I'm going to manually add it for now. And then the actual navigation We want that to be positioned over here, right? So let's let's do this above where we did the content stuff. And I'm just going to use the nav tag as a selector. And I want to position this to be uh, fixed. 
because we want it fixed down to the bottom. So we'll say fixed and bring it from the bottom 40 pixels up and from the left zero. So that puts it, you know, near where we're actually going to want it. And then I'm just going to set a high Z index here so it's on top. Let's do a Z Z index of 100. And then for the UL, let's say nav unordered list, which is not class, just nav. So for that, let's do a margin, not a margin. Let's do a list style type of none. So that will get rid of those bullet points. And then I'm going to set padding left to 30 pixels. And then we want to style the list items. So nav UL li. And I want them all uppercase. So let's do a, tech, a text transform uppercase. And let's change the color to white. And let's set a margin of 40 pixels on the top and bottom. So we're really going to separate them from each other. Uh, and then let's let's bring it over here. We need to have it initially over here more to the left because it's going to come in as this rotates or right after it rotates. So to do that, we can use transform and we want to translate on the X axis. So translate X, we want to bring it left. So that would be negative. We'll do negative uh, 100%. So if I save that now, you can see that it's, you know, it's way over here. We can still see it a little, but that's fine. It's just going to come in. Uh, but we want that to come in smoothly. So let's add a transition on that. So transition the transform property and we'll do a 0.4 second duration and we'll use ease in here. And then let's see for the you know what, let's comment this out for a minute just so we can actually see this. I want the this I want some more space between the icon. So let's do nav UL LI I LI I and I'm going to set the font size. Let's do 20 pixels and let's set margin right to 10 pixels. Oops. Okay, so it makes the icon a little bigger. Also put some space in between them. Now we're going to want each each one of these to stick out a little more kind of going at an angle. So what we can do is take the nav. Let's say nav UL LI and then the direct LI after that. And let's add a margin left of 15 pixels. So if I save that, what happens is the LIs after the initial LI are going to stick out 15 pixels. Now I want this last one to stick out even more. So what I'll do is take this, copy it, and let's say li plus li plus li. So basically anything after you know this one here. So the contact one I want to stick out double that through so 30 pixels. So now you can see that it's at an angle kind of at the same angle as the pages here. So we have a, a initially we have this negative 100 percent translate X. So if I uncomment that it goes almost off the screen, but we're going to want these ones to initially start out more over as well to the left. So I'm going to copy that. And for this one here, we have our our margin left 15. Let's do negative 150 percent. And then for this one here, let's add let's do negative 200 percent because we need those to be over more. Now, when we have the show nav applied, we want it to actually show the navigation. Everything we just did is the default when you first come to the page. When this class is actually there, which it is now because we manually added it, we want to see all the navigation stuff. So let's go. We want to do this. We'll go right above the nav here and let's say so the container div when it has show 
dash nav, then we want to take the direct navigation LIs after that, and we want to bring them into view. So let's set transform translate X on all of those to zero, which is going to bring it to its, you know, its original place. And I want to add a little bit of a delay. So we'll say uh, transition delay. Spell that right. Transition delay. I'm going to set that to 0.3 seconds so that it comes in, you know, a little bit after. Oops, I forgot my semicolon. So it comes in a little bit after the rotation. So now we're able to see it because we have that show nav. So if we take this off, then we just have, you know, just looks normal. And then if we have it, you can see it rotates and it shows the um, the navigation. Now we want to uh, have the functionality where we click this, then it, it does. It adds that class, which is going to be pretty easy. So let's jump into our script here and let's create a variable called open and we'll use document dot get element by D. We have an ID of open. We also have an ID of close. So close and then we also want to grab the container. So const container get element by D. Actually, no, that's a that's a class. So let's do I mean, you could add an ID or you could just use query selector. And we want dot container. It's a class. All right, so let's take open and let's add an event listener to that. So we want to listen for a click. And when that happens, we're going to run a, an arrow function. And then we just want to take the container and from the class list, we want to add the class of show dash nav. And then close is going to be similar. So I'm just going to copy that and let's change this to close. And then let's do container class list remove. All right. So if I save that and I click. OK, so that happens. So let me just reload. So I click and that rotates these shoot in, but we can't see the uh, the close here. So to handle that, um, let's go back to our CSS. And we basically just want the circle this to rotate when there's that show nav class. So I'll go right below the circle. So let's say circle and um, dot show nav. And then we're not actually style. I'm sorry, not circle container. So when the container has show nav applied to it, then we want to style the circle. And what we want to do with the circle is rotate it. So let's say transform rotate and we're going to rotate it negative 70 degrees. OK, so now once it rotates, we can see the close button just because of where it's positioned. When the circle rotates, it just comes into view. All right, so that looks pretty good. So not too bad. I mean, we're just adding or moving a class and we're setting certain certain uh, styles on the circle and on the navigation, you know, when we have that class applied. So you could use this on with any website, any application. So that's it. Let's go on to the next video, next project.